So the next logical step from a Pong game is a brick breaking game. And there have been many different types developed over the years, but we're going to start off with just a basic breakout clone, which is just a room full of bricks and the ball bounces around and once you've cleared all the bricks, you move on to the next level. I've already got all of our assets in place, but here's what you'll need. In the sprites, you can see I've got a bunch of folders here. And you can create a folder just by right clicking on a category and come down to create group and that'll create a folder and you can drag your sprites into it. In the balls we are going to need a sprite ball which is 24 by 24 origin is centered and precise collision checking. You can see in the name here that rather than write out the word sprite I have abbreviated it this time. It's important that you pick a naming convention and stick with it and so for the rest of the series I will be using this three letter abbreviation for the asset type. So next we will also need a sprite ball weight which is identical, it's just a different color so you don't actually need this sprite if you just want to reuse the sprite ball. Next we have bricks. I've got six different types of bricks here. They are 64 by 24 pixels, origin is centered, not precise collision checking, and all of these sprite bricks are identical, they're just different colors, so you can have as many as you want. In the paddles, we've got a sprite paddle, which is 96 by 24 pixels, origin is centered, not precise, and finally the sprite wall which is 32 by 24 not centered and not precise. I've added a background which is 640 by 480 which will be the size of our room and I've just called this BG main for background main Then we come down to objects, and we need to make objects from our ball sprites. The object ball is visible and not solid. The object ball weight is the same, visible and not solid. I've given it the sprite ball weight, but again you could just give it the same sprite ball sprite if you don't feel like creating a different one. Then in the bricks, we've got object brick 1 through 6. Using the sprites, they are visible and solid. But object brick 2 through 6 are a little bit different. You see right here in the parent, I have set them all to have the parent of object brick 1. When you give an object a parent, you are making that object a child of the other object. What that means is that it inherits all of the properties, including the events and actions, of the parent object. This is useful when you have multiple objects that are essentially identical or will act the same, because then you do not have to duplicate or give redundant coding to each object. You only have to do it for the parent object and it will pass all of that on to the child objects. So next we've got the paddle which is just object panel, which is visible and solid. And finally, the object wall, which is not visible, but is solid. This is just going to be like the wall in our Pong game where it will exist, but we will never see it. And finally, we need a room. I've named this RM1, and it is 640 by 480 with a speed of 30. You can also set the grid to a snap X of 32 and a snap Y of 24. And I've already put in the background, obviously. Next, let's come over and put in some objects. I'm going to start with the object wall. And just like last time, I'm going to put them in and stretch them along the sides. This time, I want to make sure that they are inside the room. And then I'm going to come and put in a paddle and put that down on the 
last grid line. Then I'm going to put in a ball, and I want the object ball weight, because at the beginning of the game we want the ball to weight so that we can set up the paddle at an angle before sending it off. And then let's just put in some bricks. couple rows and that should be enough to get started and here is our first level so in the next video we'll start moving the paddle and the ball